What up guys, Victor here. I'm, I'm on the beach. It is a beautiful Saturday. Brooke is right next to me. And today we got a special treat for you guys. Now, I have been wanting to do a catch and cook on the beach for a long time. So we want to catch something on the beach, play it up, show you guys the entire process from start to finish and cook it. We brought a little portable grate that Brooke brought. Uh, we brought some charcoals, a flay knife. So let's get to it. All right guys, so we are all rigged up. We got really light outfits right here. Brooks rod right there, my rod. And what we're gonna be using for bait to try to catch the croakers and mohara. So normally when we try to catch croakers and mohara, we definitely want live shrimp, even if you use them dead because the fresher the better. And the price difference isn't that much, but the only thing that the tackle shops had today was this frozen shrimp because it is a Saturday and shrimp are in high demand on Saturdays. So I'm gonna do smaller size pieces like this. Just like this or smaller for the fish that we're about to catch. And notice guys how I am peeling the shell off of the shrimp. I've noticed that you get a lot more bites and your hookup ratio is better when you take the shell off of the shrimp. Because a lot of times they'll just, your hook will be hooked to the shell and what'll happen is they'll just rip it right out. They'll suck it right out. So pieces right about this big. And I'm going with the head cam today, so hopefully the view is better. I've noticed a lot that with the chest cam that my rod gets in the way, so I'm switching it up for you guys. These guys are gonna go in the pocket. There we go. First one. Oh, it's a perk. It's a mahara. That's what we want to eat right there. That's a big one. That's what we're after right there. That is a mahara. And this guy, look at his mouth. Check that out. That's why I use this long chain cook right here. Because they will swallow it and their mouth is so long that it gets lodged in there and you can't get it out. That's the first one. So we just need about 10 more of these, and then we're gonna cook them up for Brooke, I, and her family. Let's get this guy on ice. Just chill right there. So normally the croakers, those are the longer ones you guys will see, we'll probably catch some of those. They're gonna be in the surf right here in the trough. And they're real shallow. The perch, the sand perch, or otherwise known as mahara, what I just caught, those are going to be a lot further out usually. They're usually not in the trough. And the fish that we're catching and that we're after today, maharas and croakers, are generally not solitary fish. They're generally schooling fish, so where there's one, you're bound to catch another one there. And what I'm doing is, I've caught that one so far, and I'm just moving up and down the beach left, right, because a lot of times these fish won't be in one spot. They're just cruising down the beach, going from sandbar to sandbar. They're looking for sand fleas. And that's one thing I always look for too. If there's a lot of sand fleas in one area on the beach, I'll tend to fish that area because that's what these fish are after generally. Got something. Oh, it's a crab. That's another thing is when you're doing stuff like this and you're fishing real small base, I just had a crab on and I'll pick it up. Uh, usually you won't hook them, but you do tend to get a lot of crabs missing with your bait doing this. There he is. What's it gonna be? I think it is a white. It's a glass nose. These guys are very interesting. I never tried eating one of these. Maybe in the future. These guys actually make really good snook bait. They kind of look like a catfish and they call them glass nose because check this out right there. See that? Literally, it looks like glass. It looks like a glass tumor. Got him! What did you catch me, babe? Oh, the, no, you got it. It's a, a smaller mahara. That's a good snuck bait right there. All right, so let me show you guys the new rig that I have here. So what I did is I put on a little bit more weight. We got an ounce of lead and I have it tied to a little bank right there. And I put a little dropper loop because since I've been catching more maharas than croakers, usually you get the maharas a little bit off the bottom and the croakers like it right on the bottom. 
And the whole thing with this is, since it's not a sliding egg rig like I had before, should be able to hold bottom better because better, it's kind of rough and I noticed that I'm not holding bottom and I think I'm missing bites because of it. Brooke's got one. He's got some. That's what we're looking for. Leave it to Brooke to get one. He swallowed it real nice. See, isn't that crazy? Even with that long shank of a hook, that's why you gotta fish those long shanks. That sucker's way in there. Want me to unhook him? Good job, babe. We got two Maharas. Wow. Oh, you got one. Yeah. It's a crab. Ah, we actually caught him. Ah! See how he buried himself? He's right there. Get ah! He got me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where'd he go? There it goes. Woo. That's definitely something you don't see every day. That's a huge shell. Doesn't it? It doesn't smell either, so it's been dead for a long time. It's still really hard. What's up, Brooke? What do you have to say about this dead sea turtle? They stay hard. They you stay hard forever. Them. Well, because the it's starting to peel his shell and it's starting to get white like a fossil. Oh wow! Like getting bleached. Wow, you that's know? crazy. This literally just peels off like that. Eventually, all the stuff will get eaten away or disintegrated, and then you'll just have the shell left. You know what sucks is that you couldn't even take it home because it's dead because it's highly illegal. That'd be cool to put on your wall or something. That's Oh. What is it? Oh, uh, it's a dwarf jack. No, it's a... No way! It's a bonefish! How sick is that? Oh, come here. You guys, check this little thing out right here. It's a bonefish. Whoops. Well, he's gone. Hopefully you guys saw that. That was pretty sick. Never caught one that small. I never know what you're going to catch at the beach. It's actually really, really hard to fish today because as you guys see, it is not calm. It's um, low tide, so I think a lot of fish are out way past that sandbar and they're not in the trough. So it's really hard to just feel the bites because the waves just keep moving around your weight. And when you're fishing for small things like this, you can't fish too big of a weight because it spooks them. When they feel the, te the resistance of that weight, they tend to let go of the bait. Introduce yourselves, guys. Dylan, Michael, Bruce. Dil Go ahead. We're just trying to have a good life. <laughs> They're having a good life. They just caught and released a nurse shark. Good job, guys. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and their girls are back there hiding because they don't want to be on, on camera. Say what's up, girls. Hello. Hi. What's your names? Oceana. Amanda. Amanda. Nice to meet you. Me too. Okay. So we did not catch a lot of Maharas. We only got these two little guys, but I promised you guys a catch and cook. So there's gonna be a catch and cook, even if there's not gonna be much of it. And thankfully, Brooke's parents came and saved the day and brought us some steaks on the beach. So definitely be cooking those up. You know, I've never filleted a Mahara either, Brooke. It's the first time for everything. Everyone says these are very good to eat. The meat is very white and flaky.
The meat is very white. Start fillet off in salt water. Put them in Brooke's little pan. I bet you this skin on a mahara would taste very good if you scaled it. When? Check out how funny these guys look. Their mouth protrudes so far out of their actual jaw. And they got these crazy looking little lips. Look at that mouth. Very odd looking fish. What a mahara? Yeah, look, look at his mouth. I think they're cool. Look at it. And these guys will prick you very badly right here with this top fin. Not a good feeling. Now that it's hot, sometimes it poops. All right, Chef Brock, take us through the process. What are you doing? We got some butter right here. Keeping it real simple, because we don't have a lot anyway. So we're gonna do some salt. Pepper, basics in the kitchen, paprika, do some garlic salt, get some more sodium in, in there, and last but not least, onion powder. We're going to do a little bit of butter, one over here, one over there. And that's all for the fish. And then Brian, Brooke's dad, was generous enough to bring some very good snakes, dude. Got some portobello mushrooms. Woo. We're eating good on the beach. And we're sprinkling some lemon right on top of the fillet, fillets too. Butter's boiling and it looks like our fish is getting close to done, but I'm kind of surprised for how thin they are. These fish fillets took a long time to cook. Honestly, this is like one of my favorite fish. It's so good. What's it taste like? Flaky? It's very flaky. I don't even know what to compare it to, but it's really good. I mean, the meat was really white. It's not fishy at all, is it? No, it's really good. So does it get better than eating steak and fresh fish on the beach for dinner? I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite. Brooke said it's the best fish she ever had. Oh, really good. Really, really good. It's real. I, I don't know what to say. It's just that good. I think that's why so many people spend so much time fishing for them. It's very tedious. We've been out here for four hours and we caught two. And it was a really bad day. And they're, they're, you don't get a lot of meat on them, even on those bigger ones. Because the ones that we caught were about the average size you would eat. And, but I can see why the market value for these guys is so high now and why so many people like to eat them because they are very good. Definitely for people who don't like to eat fish. Not fishy whatsoever. Thank you for watching the video guys. This one was actually a lot of fun to make. Even though we didn't catch a lot, just being outside, food tastes so much better outside, don't you think? Yeah, it was really good. Just like being on the beach, being able to cook on the beach was made that much better. Yeah. But other than that guys, huge announcement. Please do not tune out. You guys need to hear this. This bad boy right here, the Land Shark Fishing Shirts, in high demand. Everyone's been asking for them. They are finally up. I have a website. Link will be in the description box below. I'm going to be offering two shirts for now. It's going to be the white Land Shark Fishing Shirt with the logo and then an all black shirt. I got multiple sizes available. You guys, please check out the site. It's going to be down below. But I have to tell you this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pre-order. Now, what that means is I don't have them in stock, but for, for a pre-order, the reason I'm going this direction is because I want everyone to be able to get the size they want, the color they want. So for me to be able to just guess as to what everyone's size and color is gonna be is very hard. So this is what a lot of YouTubers do is they do a pre-order. So if you guys wanna support the channel, if you guys like the shirts, I know a lot of people ask for them, please make sure to go ahead and pre-order all the information will be on the website as far as when you'll actually get your shirt and when they will, when they will ship. I picked a good, um, high quality cotton material. It's a Gildan shirt. This is like an industry standard. So, very excited about that, guys. Brooke's excited too. Oh, yeah. Finally got the shirts going. And then another thing. Um, some people requested uh, a Patreon. 
or how they can donate. And you know, I'm not trying to be preachy or ask for your guys' money, but for people who do who do want to give a little bit extra to see this channel and for me for me to be able to make these videos, for Brooke and I to go on these trips, you know, it, it does cost money. And uh, now that I do do YouTube full time, you know, uh, a one dollar donation, two dollar donation, five dollar donation, whatever it may be, it will help. So. If you guys would like to donate, it'd be really appreciated. The money will be put to good use. It's all going towards videos, adventures, Tackle Tuesdays, everything, all the works. So that will also be in the description box below. And I think that's a wrap. So if you guys like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up. That thumbs up is down there. If you guys dislike this video, I don't know why you would dislike this video. I thought it was a pretty good video. Thank you for watching guys. Stay salty and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video guys, and like I said, please make sure to go ahead and check out that website. Link is in the description box below. Get your shirts, and if you guys made it this far and want to see other videos like this, please make sure to hit those subscribe button icons on the screen. Until that next one.